Somebody might think this is too easy of a recipe, but I say nay, we must look deeper. We're gonna make everything from scratch, everything. Okay, so today we were making a peanut butter and jelly, but not really. It's not just about the peanut butter and jelly as it is. Of course, we have our childhood nostalgia, especially if you're from America, you're gonna know the peanut butter and jelly very, very well. My simple argument is, is it better when you make absolutely everything from scratch? From the bread, to the jelly, to the peanut butter, does it make a big difference or is it not really worth it? I think it's gonna be better, but we're here to put this conversation to rest and my mom is here to help us. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? All righty tatty, folks. Uh, all right, yeah, let's not start with that. We have three major elements here. The bread, obviously the butter of peanuts, and the jelly. Well, in this case, we're using jam. Peanut butter and jam sandwich? Peanut butter and fruit spread sandwich? I don't know, I just want something more general sounding. Anyway, let's begin with our bread. This is the exact same recipe that's in my store-bought sandwich bread video, so if you want it broken down in more depth, the link is in the description. But I'll give you a quick lowdown anyway. Start with 175 milliliters of water, to that you're gonna add 125 milliliters of whole milk, heat that to 95 Fahrenheit, then mix in nine grams of instant yeast, let it sit, combine your 440 grams of bread flour, eight grams of fine sea salt, and 21 grams of granulated sugar. Whisk that together, pop it on your stand mixer, begin mixing, then add your yeast juice. Mix that till elastic, and finally add 42 grams of salt and unsalted butter until fully incorporated and you get a smooth, supple dough. Spank it a little, obviously. Then you cover it, give it a name worthy of respect and adoration, then let it rise until doubled. Then punch its hopes and dreams down, dump it on a lightly floured work surface, roll into a nice rectangle, then roll that rectangle into a nice, long, voluptuous tube. Is voluptuous the right word here? And place into a greased loaf pan. Then cover it with a damp towel, let it proof till doubled, and finally pop it into an oven set to 350 Fahrenheit or 175 Celsius for 35 to 40 minutes or until you get a beautiful little man like this. Now pop him out and let it cool in a wire rack on its side. I actually don't think I mentioned that in the original video, but resting on its side helps keep the top nice and domed. Now let's get into our peanut butter. This is yet another thing where you go, oh my gosh, is it really that easy? That's all it takes? Yes. So start off with two and a half cups or 375 grams of raw peanuts. These Spanish ones have their skins, which are super annoying, but that's fine. Toss them onto a baking sheet and then into an oven set to 350 Fahrenheit or 175 Celsius for about 12 minutes or until they're nice and deeply toasted. Be careful not to burn them if that wasn't obvious already. Once they're done, pull them out and if they do still have their skins, place them in a clean dish towel, rub your nuts together until all their skins come off. Now place your skinless hot nuts to the side to cool completely. Once cool, add them to a food processor and begin processing on high speed. Now look, let them grind, don't mess with it. Now if it does cake up on the side, you can always scrape down with a spatula and continue grinding. The grind never stops, all right. First it'll get crumbly, then it'll start to ball up, do a little dance, and finally it will become more liquid. And at this point, you should add about a half teaspoon or five of fine sea salt, then once it reaches the appropriate peanut buttery consistency, that's it. That's your peanut butter. Now pour that into a bowl or an airtight container and leave it covered at room temp and use when desired. Okay, next up is an ultra simple strawberry jam. I know it's not technically jelly, but purists can step right the f*** off. Start with two pounds or 900 grams of fresh strawberries, cut all those tops off, line them up like an armada of strobes. Now, if they're extra chunky, you can quarter them, otherwise have all of your strawberries, then place them in a medium sauce pot along with three cups or 550 grams of granulated sugar. Stir those until thoroughly incorporated and let them sit and macerate. Remember, that's macerate. Don't be nasty. For about 10 minutes. Then using a potato masher, crush your strawberries as best as you can, then place them on the stove over medium high heat, bring to a boil, and let those bad boys boil for around eight to 10 minutes, stirring occasionally until thickened and jammy. You can also put a little on a plate to cool to make sure it's jammy enough. This is much more loose when it's hot versus when it's cold. So be sure to account for that when reducing. Then just cool in a bowl set over an ice bath until cold. Now the moment of truth, our most difficult plating assembly we've seen to date. First, slice your bread lovingly and beautifully. Next, get two of those slices, and on one side, hit it with your peanut butter to your heart's desire, and of course, on the other, the confiture de fraise, aka strawberry jam. Uh, my French audience is probably not super happy with that. Place the jam side on top of the peanut side, slice on the diagonal, because it always tastes better that way, and let us begin our taste test. Okay, so we've made it to our final destination. Homemade everything, jam, peanut butter, bread, all coming together. I still think this is better, but there's a nostalgia factor that's kind of missing. If you're looking for that ultra, almost commercial level softness, you're not gonna get that with this bread, just straight up. But the flavors are there. The toasty peanut butter, that rich, intense strawberry flavor. To me, this is a winner, but we have a special taste tester to ring it in. 
my mom. I will hand feed you. Number one. Number two. So one. I don't know, Josh. You don't know. <laughs> There's no wrong answer. Just don't harm all the long. This is number one. <laughs> and this is number two. Number two. Think number two is mine? Boys, I can't believe we lost this one. No. We did all this work for nothing. No point to doing this at all. I want to do it again. One thing I do want to note really quick. So the store-bought bread absorbs nothing at all. So you can literally still see the jam and the peanut butter. Now on my bread, it actually absorbed all of the peanut butter and all of the jam. So if you're gonna be saucing this or jamming this, make sure to put extra, otherwise you're gonna lose to the damn store. That's it. <laughs> you wanna know what else was a faulty tasting and we will absolutely be revisiting the peanut butter and jelly B-roll. All right guys, and that is it. So we made the peanut butter and jelly look. Let me take a step back really quick. <sighs> Mom, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's so funny to me because we make all these crazy things and I've worked in professional restaurants where it takes months just to get something on the plate. And so it's funny whenever we do these ridiculously basic foods and then we're just like stumped. I think at the end of the day, when you make your own jelly, you make your own peanut butter, those flavors are gonna be good. But the one thing that's tough to beat is that sort of commercial soft quality to the bread. I would even argue that we needed to use a different kind of bread in this recipe. And I definitely think we would have easily won this because the flavor was superior, the jelly was superior, but that bread, maybe a brioche would have been better. I don't know. Try some different breads for me at the very least, okay? You could do me that much. But anyway, with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.